Competition for food in nature is usually severe. Even decomposers such as fungi and bacteria vie with each other for nutrients. This situation has produced an interesting adaptation, one that has proven very useful to mankind. Staphylococcus epidermitis is a bacterium which can be easily cultured on nutrient agar. Penicillium notatum, a mold commonly found on fruits and cheeses, also grows well on agar. How will the two species behave in competition? If the agar is inoculated with the bacterium and a bit of penicillium is placed in the center, this is the result. There is a clear zone surrounding the growing penicillium colony. The multiplication of the bacterium has been inhibited by a substance produced by the mold, the antibiotic penicillin. In nature, the production of antibiotics allows molds to stake out a territory in which to grow and reproduce. By irradiating cultures of penicillium with ultraviolet radiation, mutant varieties have been developed which produce significantly greater quantities of penicillin for use as medicine. Here, a high yield mutant is compared against a wild type variety of penicillium. The classification of fungi is based upon the methods used for spore production. We have been looking at the phycomycetes, a group of fungi which produce spores in a sporangium. Other fungi, the basidiomycetes, use a different method of spore production. This group includes the organisms known as mushrooms or toadstools, along with bracket fungi, coral fungi, puffballs, the bird's nest fungus, and rusts and smuts, which are destructive plant parasites. The visible mushroom is but a short stage in the life cycle of these large basidiomycetes. For most of its life, the fungus exists in the soil as a tangled mass of hyphae called mycelium. Spreading through the moldering humus, secreting enzymes, digesting and absorbing the nutrients released, and undergoing sexual exchange of nuclei, the mycelium may exist for years before organizing into the spore-producing structure we call a mushroom. If a mushroom cap is sectioned, the spore-bearing areas can be seen lining the surface of the lamellae, or gills as they are often called. The spores are produced on a club-shaped basidium, which is the spore-bearing structure which gives the group its name. When mature, the spores are fired into the air spaces between the gills and rain down for dispersal by wind. A spore print gives an idea of the vast number of spores which are produced in a six hour period. A number of common mushroom species are poisonous to man. Unfortunately, there is no known method of telling edible mushrooms from poisonous ones except by correctly identifying them by species. For example, would you eat this one? How about this one? Or this one? Well, don't. Eating these mushrooms can result in death. Unless you can correctly identify edible species, it is prudent not to experiment with eating wild mushrooms. The third method of spore production belongs to the cup fungi, or ascomycetes. A section through the cup of an ascomycete shows the spore-producing structures. Each sac, or ascus, produces eight spores. The ascus is a kind of spore cannon which can fire the mature spores into the air for wind-borne dispersal. But the real artillery pieces of the kingdom are the fungi which live in the fecal material of herbivorous mammals. In order to be assured of germinating in manure, fecal fungi must find ways to optimize their chances of getting their spores into the animal's food. This species produces a ball of spores. Responding to light, the cannon is aimed. Osmotic pressure builds up, and with a pop, the spore ball is hurled a meter or more beyond the home manure pile. Sticking to a blade of grass, 
the spores have an excellent chance of being ingested by a grazing animal. We have examined fungi from three main groups. The phycomycetes, which produce spores in a sporangium, the basidiomycetes, which produce spores on a basidium, and the ascomycetes, which produce spores in a sac-like ascus. Most of these organisms are beneficial decomposers. Some fungi, however, have taken up parasitic life. The gross deformation of this ear of corn is caused by a parasitic fungus which has turned the corn kernels into sacks of spores. Even the lowly amoeba can become host to parasitic fungi. The spherical structures, called hostoria, are used by the parasite to invade and anchor into the host cell. Fungal organisms have evidently been around for a long time. However, their origin is obscure since most fungi are soft-bodied and leave no conclusive fossil record. There is one group of contemporary life forms which offers a clue to the mystery of fungi origin. These are the slime molds, organisms which have at times been classified as fungi and at other times as protists. In this stage of its life cycle, the slime mold is motile, flowing over the surface of the log, feeding on bacteria and bits of decomposing material. Its behavior is much like that found in a familiar group of protists, the amoebas. Slime molds, however, have undeniably fungal-like characteristics. They produce sporangia, which liberate airborne spores. Since they have characteristics in common with both protists and fungi, the slime molds may represent an evolutionary link between these two major divisions of life. The Kingdom Fungi, including the organisms which produce our antibiotics, useful food items with proper caution, agents of spoilage, and parasites. But far overshadowing these human interests, the fungi fill a vital niche in the ecology of our planet the recycling through decomposition of nutrients in the living world.